Hey, my name is Lady Tina Leader. Here on this channel, we talk about charisma, confidence, and communication. And today, we're gonna talk about what a boundary is, how to set it, and please stick to the very end because I'm gonna offer you different phrases that you can use in order to set these boundaries. So here's the thing about boundaries. People adhere to the dominant standard of any environment, place, or thing. A really good recent example is I went to Erwan recently, which is a high-end grocery store, and it was beautiful. If you look into this store, Store, it looks like a grocery store from the Truman Show because everything's just so neatly stacked in a row and everything's just perfectly aesthetically beautiful. It's all lined up. All the products are lined up perfectly. Everything's faced all the way to the front. Nothing is pushed back. And you can tell every staff member, they try to make sure everything is perfectly done. It's extremely OCD friendly and aesthetically pleasing. But here's the thing about that I walked in with my friend I picked up a box and when I put it back if it was Ralph's or any other grocery store I would have just put it back not thought about it okay I put it back in its general location at Air One guess what I did I not only put it back but because it was slightly off and everything was perfectly aligned I actually adjusted it so it was perfectly aligned to everything else. But why did I do that? My friend was laughing at me and she's just like, you know why you did that? It's because the standard of this place forces people to make sure it's perfectly aligned. And it's so true. When you walk into a clean home, people who are naturally maybe messy, they act a little bit more organized. They they actually put things away or they're very careful about where they place themselves. And it's because the dominant standard of the environment forces them to actually act in a different way. So you could do the same thing. The dominant person and any group social setting usually sets the standard of what kind of social interactions happen within that group dynamic. Usually you call that person the leader, maybe they're the extrovert of the group. But whatever it is, there is a dominant person who's setting the standard of any environment, people, places, and things. That being said, in order to set a boundary, your boundary has to be a dominant force. Now, when I say dominant force, I don't mean that it's something that you're forcing upon something. As a matter of fact, nobody forced me to line that product back up. No staff member yelled at me. Get out of here. It's something I actually did on my own. As a matter of fact, I was inspired to make sure that how I set the box back in the shelf fit the standard of the location. And that means the boundaries start with us. We have to set a boundary for ourselves. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you some phrases to use to set boundaries for other people to other people. But I just wanted to touch on this first because it's so important to talk about your self boundary and how that influences other people. Because when it comes to boundaries, you are already setting boundaries. And when somebody reaches in to hug me and I don't wanna hug them, I naturally back out because that's a boundary. But even though I'm not saying, hey, I don't do hugs, I can go to that but I'm already saying, whoa, body language, why? That's a boundary. Our standards are naturally setting boundaries at all times. It's happening all the time, and that's your standard, which I'm gonna define as when you're alone, how you treat yourself and how you talk to yourself. That is so important. If you treat yourself like crap, if you talk to yourself like crap, guess what? You're gonna get crap from other people because people can sense that. Other people call it law of attraction. Other people call it law of expectation. Humans are smart. We can tell when people don't care about themselves. We can tell when somebody's insecure. We can tell when somebody's not so confident. We can tell when somebody doesn't care as much about themselves as maybe I care about myself or somebody else cares about themselves. And then people take advantage of that, not because they're malicious, but everything to do with us just adhering to that social interaction. It's something we naturally do because we always want to reach to the top of the uh, hierarchies of competence, which is from Jordan Peterson, if you want to look into that. But if your boundaries are based on your personal standards by nature, that means that if you're constantly finding yourself with places, people and things that violate you, I'd ask myself the question, how do I, in what way do I constantly violate myself? 
It's a very hard question to answer, but if you went ahead and journaled this out, you'd be surprised of what would come out. How do you constantly violate yourself? And maybe you violate yourself by not putting your foot down. Maybe you violate yourself by not verbalizing what your expectations are, right? That's a violation of self. Here's an example of how you might violate yourself. Say I'm going to wake up at 8 a.m. Boom, that's what I'm gonna do, go to sleep. 8 a.m. rolls around. Oof, I'm a little tired, I'm, I'm gonna sleep in just a little bit longer. 8.10 rolls around, woo, okay, uh, just a little longer. 8.20 rolls around. You're like, oh, okay, well now I'm in a rush, so I get out of bed, I'm in a rush. I don't even make my bed, even though I said earlier in that week I was gonna make my bed every single day, so I don't do that. I'm in a rush, so I just brush my teeth real fast. I said I was gonna dress up really nicely, but I don't even have time to think about how to dress up, so I just throw on whatever I need to throw on and I go out the door. That is a way that I violate my Myself because I broke a promise to myself. I said I was gonna wake up at 8 a.m. I didn't. I said I was gonna make my bed. I didn't. I said I was gonna dress nice. And I didn't. Three different times in that small short of time, I violated myself. Those are the things that I would wanna look at. It is a standard. And the moment you violate your own standards to yourself, People can see that, people can feel it, and they're gonna start violating your standards or what you think your standards are, which I'm gonna get into a little bit because there are things called real standards and secret standards. And I see this all the time when it comes to negotiations, let's say salary negotiations. Maybe you'll say to everyone else and you feel it, that hey, my standard is I only work $100 an hour. That's my hourly rate, I only work uh, for $100 an hour. But my secret standard is that, well, okay, but if, they give me 70 an hour, 70 an hour is great. That, I mean, what, what am I gonna complain about? 70 an hour, that, that's fine. Oh, and then there's an offer that comes that's actually $50 an hour. And then you're like, well, uh, you know, I, I kind of need money right now. So, you know, maybe $50 an hour is, is fine. To, yeah, $50 an hour, what am I complaining about $50 an hour? You know what, that's fine. You don't even negotiate back $50 an hour. Cool, or maybe you did negotiate back from 40 to 50 because you're like, well, at least I can get 50. And then you feel victorious because you went from 40 to 50 when originally you stated that your standard was $100 an hour. This is what I call fake standards versus real standards is that you have an internal standard, maybe in your subconscious, you're not even aware of that you're like, well, here's my minimum and here, here's what I want. So this is, I'm gonna name this my standard of what I want, but your minimum is your your standard. I have standards. When you walk into a place that's a clean home, somebody's a clean freak, and their minimum is, is your high standard, right? <laughs> like their minimum is a high standard for you, but to them, it's, it's such a minimum. A anything below this is just pure chaos. They, they can't even think, they can't even do anything but clean it up because that's their minimum. Clean it up. So I came to the realization that my minimum my minimum, my bottom level, when they say your standard is in hell, my bottom level of minimum that I'll accept, that's actually my true standard. It's not what I want, what I desire, what my goal is. My true standard is my absolute minimum requirement to interact with me. That is my standard. And that is a hard pill to swallow. So whenever I accept something and I don't like it, I don't like the taste of this, I have to realize that, oh, wait, this is the minimum that I am accepting. As a matter of fact, this is my standard. And this is what the expectation is and what the expectation I'm putting out there, perhaps because I'm giving myself that standard, that minimum. And so it's a matter of raising that standard and raising that standard with yourself first. And then that's gonna influence people outside but there are a few phrases that I think is very helpful. So here are a few phrases. Maybe I'll put it in the description, either a link to download, or I'll just put it there so you can see it visually. I just broke this down like an engineer. So if, if you choose A, you go this way. If you choose B, you go this way. And you could kind of piece it together. I find that to be the most helpful. So depending on the severity of the boundary that you're setting and the relationship with the person is going to inform you which route to choose. 
lose. So I'm going to stack this up from low priority of relationship or interaction to high priority. What I'm going to give you in the beginning is going to be from strangers. So this is what I would probably tell strangers all the way up to my significant other or my family members. The closer you are in relation, I do think that you need to set higher boundaries and say more things. And then the lower the relationship is, you can say less and get away with it. And I think that's perfectly fine and socially acceptable. From the low end, so this is stranger level. No is a complete sentence. That's all you have to say, no. Use a down tone, no, not an up tone, no. No, you say no. If you want to explain further, now we're going up the hierarchy. Hey, that's not a priority right now. I won't be able to X. So I won't be able to make it. No explanation needed beyond that. Now, if the relationship is more acquaintance level, maybe friendship level, I would give a reason. Going back to, hey, that's not a priority right now. I won't be able to X because I'm focused on paying off my debt and prioritizing non-essential spending towards my debt payoff. So the key here is giving the reason why you're saying no. Stranger level, say no. Stranger level, you can even say, hey, that's not a priority right now. I won't be able to X. Once the relationship gets a little higher, the intimacy level gets a little higher, I would give them the reason. Hey, this is what I'm focused on right now because da 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 So the next step is value emphasis. So I'm going to attach a value to my reasoning. So if, if it's the debt payoff example, once again, I'm gonna say, and paying off my debt provides me freedom and freedom is very important to me. You can even simply say, this is very important to me because I value X, whatever X is. And then the next step up is the bow, especially for somebody who's super dominant or has a big, strong personality, I'll add the bow. And the bow is wrapping it up and saying, I'm sure you understand, I'm sure you get it. So something like that, that's equalizing that relationship. I'm sure you get where I'm coming from. If you want to add another body language bow, you wanna nod your head while you do that. I'm sure you understand. If it's in person, you wanna nod your head. I'm sure you understand. I'm sure you get it. I, I'm sure you're with me on this. That's just a little bow at the end that I like to do. I just wanna add two key mistakes that I used to make that I don't make anymore when it comes to boundary setting. Number one, don't laugh. Huh. Especially as a woman, this is very hard because sometimes when things make you uncomfortable, you tend to laugh like, <laughs> like, okay, no, no, don't do that. That's not a no, that's not a boundary. It's a very serious thing. When you respect yourself and you love yourself, it is a no, there is a line in the sand. It's one of those things that as you uh, experience life and uh, you experience people try to cross your boundary, you learn to drop your face. So I had to learn this because it's very hard for me to not smile and not try to build rapport with somebody. So I had to learn to drop my face and say, no, I'm not doing that. Speaking in down tones, saying no very comfortably and dropping your face, don't laugh, don't smile, this is a boundary. Because if you don't do that, even the most meaningful person, even your family members, your significant other, they might not get it. They think you're joking around because physically you're showing that you're laughing and smiling. So just drop it and be in your CEO mode, <laughs> be in your executive mode and be like, no, that's not happening. Seriously? Seriously then they'll really get the message. <laughs> Trust me, even if you're over the phone, even if it's through the text, don't add an emoji, a smiley face. You don't need to do that. Drop it in, period. And then one more mistake I used to make is that when people would text me, let's say a friend text me, hey, are you free on Saturday? I used to say, yeah, what's up? So when somebody asks you a question that you don't necessarily want to answer right away because you want more information, literally just say that. Hey, I need a little bit more information. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Or an easy way to say that. For what? Could you elaborate? Could you tell me a little bit more? Like what's going on with this? I need to know more information. So you could use any one of those phrases or anything else that's related to that. But basically asking a question as they ask you a question because you don't have enough information to answer it properly. And I think that's 100% fair. If you're gonna ask me if I'm free on Friday, first of all, my time ain't free. <laughs> My time is not free. But second of all, I need to know more information. So I'll say something like, hey, could you tell me a little bit more? What are you, what are you talking about? What's going on Saturday? Or I'll simply say, if it's a friend, I'll simply say, what's up? I won't even say, yeah, what's up? Or no, what's up? I'll say, 
what's up? And then eventually they're, they're like, oh, it's this, this and that. Oh, okay. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, okay. What time would that be? I just keep asking questions. I'm not going to say yes or no. I'm going to elaborate. I'm going to see what the situation is first, because it's not about me saying, yes, I'll go to that. No, I'm going to that. It's about me prioritizing. Maybe I have a free calendar, but I'm not available for an activity like that, right? Because that's a boundary. I don't know if I'm available for that specific activity or that specific outing, that specific thing. I don't know. I need to know a little bit more about that. Could you tell me a little bit more? And people can't blame you for that. And if they do, that's uh, that's a little toxic. Maybe you should go look for a relationship somewhere else. Typically, if it's your loved one, don't be afraid to set down boundaries because if they truly do love you, which I tend to believe that your loved ones at, in the heart of hearts, they do love you. They, they just want the best for you at the end of the day. They may not know what the best is for you at the time. They may think they know what the best is for you, but only you do. So you have to be able to set that standard for yourself and therefore set your boundaries. Okay, this was a little bit serious, but I think boundaries are a serious conversation. So I wanted to put that out there. Hopefully that framework works well or you can adopt it into your life. See what happens. Please let me know in the comments below if that was helpful uh, or if you want any other type of frameworks for any other thing because I do have a lot of frameworks like this for various different things